Welcome back to our Believe It or Not chess series. And today we get to see a masterpiece and a Believe It or Not endgame from William James Lombardi and Edmar Madness, both of whom are American chess grandmasters. And just so you know, Billy, Bill Lombardi, was the second, you could say the coach of Bobby Fischer. When Bobby Fischer was playing for the World Championship, Billy over here, Mr. Lombardi, was helping him out. He was helping with the chess part, uh, training part, and the documents part as well when needed. So Bill has this tough position, and it's going to be an incredible endgame for White, and you'll see why. But first, Bill has this tough position with an outside pawn, the bad king, you could say double pawns, you could say Swiss cheese, and Bill chooses to trade against Edmar. Edmar says, okay, and we go into this opposite color bishop endgame. Usually we say those are drawn. Opposite color bishops are drawn, but not always. Especially when they're outside passers, ooh, those give you chances to win anytime in any endgame. All right. So in this case, black is gonna say, wait, my king can hold everything. This side, that side, everything. And white is gonna say, really? Can he call the chiefs? Can he hold your Isolani H6 pawn? Can he hold my pawns, which will which will roll down on the H file? Can he hold down my A pawn too? And can your bishop hold both sides of the board? Because he can only do one diagonal at a time. All right. So in the actual game, we say no babysitter kings here. Babysitter, get out of there. King, do whatever you want. Go wherever you want to. And the black king says, I'm waiting. Okay. Right now we're going to poke black. We're going to see how he reacts. And the Black King says, if you go there, I'll watch from G7. If you go there, I'll watch for my pawn from E7. Either way, it's all good, all covered. Black is being really annoying and making sure that the pawns are blockaded, right? His job is to poke them a little bit and make sure they're on light squares. If they're all on light squares, for example, here, they can easily be stopped. Yeah, you just blockade them and say, no, you will not get through. So Billy says, pawns, light squares, light squares, light squares, good. Light squares, light squares, light squares, good. Don't go anywhere. Stay there. I'm not letting you on my dark squares. And Edmar says, mm, okay, let's let's just move, maneuver. You know, I may want my bishop on f5. I like my bishop on this glorious outpost, this artsy outpost from where it controls everything. And ooh, ooh I smell a weakness. You have something on light squares that I may want. Okay. If black ignores my pawn, I will get through. For example, if the king stood over there, I will come in and promote. Okay. That's why the black king now has to babysit the A pawn. In the meantime, while the king is preoccupied, eh, who's covering this guy? Nobody? Nobody's covering that guy. So let's gobble, gobble. Okay. While we're gobbling, gobbling, they can't do anything because the only pawn on the dark square is in my glance. Okay. And now that we got what we wanted, the next step is push the pawn to a six. We're going to scare him into keeping the bishop here. While the bishop is here, our king can run around, do whatever he wants. My bishop can always protect my pawn. As you'll see later, the pawn is safe. So our king has a free hand. So Edmar says, my free hand is going to come and... not slap you. Come on, that's mean. But it is going to come and take all your pawns, as we will see soon. All right, king c4 and protection. Once we've protected everything, the king can come and eat everything else. Okay, uh, now that all the pawns are covered, we can come into the outpost. And remember that we took this guy on f7? He didn't seem important. So why was he eaten in the first place? Squares, doors, entry squares. We don't care about your pawns, especially when they're doubled. We care about the squares that let me come in and take everything I want. All right. So that's why Edmar says, ooh, thanks for the pawn. Gobble, gobble some squares while I'm at it. And you can't stop this side and that side for long. He's going to try, right? The black king is going to try to get a position, but opposite color bishops don't allow 
for our position, as you'll see. Okay, we're going to waste some time with the pawn first. We're going to waste some time and see where the bishop goes. Okay, that's called a waiting move. Okay, the bishop doesn't have this, these squares, just in case. And now the masterpiece. I'll leave it to you to figure it out. See if you can figure it out yourself. Okay, why to play? How does white break through? Okay, you have three seconds. Feel free to pause the video. And if you said bishop g8, congrats. All right. Why are we giving up bishops? Are we nice people? Are we being generous? No, we're not Santa Claus. But we're actually making entry squares. Okay. It turns out that the black king can hold e6 and g6 for now. If the bishop goes away, king f7. Bishop comes here, king g7. He is holding, just barely, but holding. The bishop cannot come here safely. But the king really wants to come in, really wants to come in. So he says, you know what? Take my bishop, even if it's not safe. That's how much I love those pawns, how much I love those squares. And after I come in, I'll take everything. The bishop doesn't even matter. He was opposite color bishops anyway. So eh, I don't want to draw. I want to give him up so I can get all your pawns because pawns against bishop has way better chances than, let's say, opposite color bishops, all right? So that's why he throws the bishop away to make way, all right? And only after giving up the bishop can he come in. If he comes in mm, with the king right now, can the black king take? Let's find out, okay? The black kind of has to take because it turns out that's a zugzwang. You know why he put the pawn here? First of all, to take away the squares, but also to put black in Zuzwang. Black has no good moves. If you look at the king, he's kind of stuck. Right? He can go to g6. Meh, I can always squeeze him in later. And I finally got through all the way to, to b7 to promote my pawn. And if you take my bishop, which is what actually happened in the game, then I gobble everything. All right, then I start eating pawns one by one by one. And the black bishop overextends himself. He can't do everything at once. He has to look over this pawn, cover this guy, cover that guy. Doing way too much. Stop my pawns in the meantime, not going to happen. All right, let's take a look. Edmar says, thank you. Puts the black king in Zugzwang again. The black king cannot get out. And if he plays h5, we start running. If the black king comes here, ooh, free pawn. Okay, so the bishop is running out of squares. And we say, hey, you want another pawn? Take that one too. If you want h4, you can have it because the other one will promote. I told you that outside pastors have winning chances and that's exactly what happened here. Even without the bishop, they have winning chances. All right, so you cannot afford to take the h guy, Mr. Harry on h4. So you have to wait around this diagonal. And while you're waiting, more passers coming in and your king is still boxed in. Main thing in endgames is king activity, as Mr. Edmar shows here. All right. After the pawn gets through, there is no stopping it, and he promotes easily and wins the game. So this idea with bishop g8, I found it mind-blowing, how you could just leave a bishop. It's kind of like how Alexei Shirov put the bishop on h3 in his opposite color endgame, which was also spectacular. But here, it's just... A nice breakthrough, taking over the light squares that Black gifted us, all right? So in your games, make sure that you value those pawns, almost worship them, and make sure you get all this with cheese with for your king deep into the end game, all right? Thanks for watching, and until next time.